One of the first things I kind of want to describe to you is exactly what is a gene. And so a gene in simplified definition is a sequence of DNA that is going to lead to essentially either a functional RNA molecule, like a ribosomal RNA, or perhaps tRNA, or it's going to lead to a protein. So these genes are going to be found on chromosomes, and essentially they're going to be made of a couple components. If we draw it kind of in a linear form here, we are going to have a promoter. The promoter is where you're going to see RNA polymerase bind. And then you're going to have essentially a start site. And the start site is for transcription. So transcription, remember, is the process of going from DNA to RNA. And then structurally, that gene is going to be made up of bits and pieces. And this is primarily found in the eukaryotic cells, what we call introns and exons. So exons are going to lead to the coding sequence. Or the other way of saying that is the sequence that will become the protein. Basically, it's what's going to be read in terms of RNA that will then be read into the sequence of amino acids. So here in the black are going to be what we call the exons. And introns are going to be what's going to be thrown away. So after transcription, what we normally see is this concept that we create what we call a precursor mRNA. So now we are an RNA molecule here. And it's going to be consisting of all the introns and exons. So I'm going to call this precursor or pre-mRNA. And then as we move down, what we're going to do is splice out the introns. and form our mRNA. So the introns are thrown away and the exons are kept and that's going to devise our coding region. And what's kind of interesting is uh, we'll then modify it so mRNAs themselves are going to have a poly A tail and what we call a 5 prime cap. So you can look at my video on RNA splicing to learn a little bit more about this. But I kind of wanted to show you kind of the general structure that we're going to see in the chromosome. The concept that we're going to have a promoter where the RNA polymerase is going to bind. We're going to have a transcriptional start site. And then also down here we'll have a transcriptional stop. We don't want to go on forever. And then within the gene we're going to have exons, which are the parts that we want to keep and the introns, which are parts we're going to throw away. Not that they're not functional, it's just they're not going to be utilized in the code, which is down here at the bottom. All right, so if we expand upon that, there's going to be other things that are going to be involved in the control of these genes. And these are little, what we call enhancers or repressors. Uh, the reason these are important is the concept that these genes have to be controlled. There's got to be things that regulate when they get turned on and when they get turned off. And enhancers and repressors are elements that are found near genes typically, and they can be actually found within introns that will allow other proteins to bind and then ultimately control whether this gene gets transcribed or not. So this is a general overview of a gene. Uh, in some subsequent videos, I'm going to go into a little bit more detail for you. In this video, I want to talk about plasmids or vectors that we see in a molecular biology lab. Essentially, how we use these in the lab is these are going to allow us to move DNA around. So if we got a particular piece of DNA that we are interested in, we can then move it using a plasmid. And also, these will allow us to copy DNA or make more of it and in some cases it will also allow us to make a protein 
We'll also see that vectors can be utilized to put into cells. So we can put this DNA into different types of cells. These can include prokaryotic cells, eukaryotic cells, a wide variety of different types of cells. In some cases, they can allow us to put into chromosomes. So this is uh, definitely of interest if you want it to be carried on to the next generation. So we utilize vectors that ultimately can allow us to put it into the organism's chromosomes, and then these can be inherited, so passed on to the offspring. Okay, so just to give you a general idea of a makeup of a plasmid is the ones that we use in molecular biology lab that we put into bacteria are always typically circular in nature. All right, And these um, prokaryotic cells can take up. They're used to working with these. They will always contain what we call an origin of replication Basically what this allows it to do is when it's put into the prokaryotic cells, it allows the organism to make copies of it. Now, this is useful, so if I want to make more of that particular piece of DNA I'm interested in, uh, I can put it into the plasmid, put it into bacteria, and then it will make copies of it. They will also typically have, or should have, because these are designed, have what we call an MCS. This is defined as a multiple cloning site. This will consist of a bunch of restriction enzyme sites. And what this is going to allow us to do is insert our piece of DNA that we're interested in. So we can take a gene from a human and insert it into this plasmid at the multiple cloning site, and then voila, we're, we're able to copy it in the bacteria. Now to make our lives easier, they will also have a selection gene. So in terms of putting this into bacteria, this will be an antibiotic resistant gene. So for bacteria, this is antibiotic resistance. So basically what we're saying is if the bacteria have this vector, have this plasmid, they will be able to grow in the presence of an antibiotic. So one way of looking at this is in presence of antibiotic. This may be ampicillin, penicillin. So when I have my vector and my bacteria have the vector with the selection gene in it, so when I put that bacteria in the presence of an antibiotic, only the bacteria that have the plasmid will grow. All the other ones will actually perish. So I'm giving it a selective agent to make sure I can find my DNA that I'm interested in. If I don't have the selection marker in it, then I don't know if I pick a bacteria if it contains my DNA or if it's just is a regular bacteria grown. So this really allows me to uh, reduce my complexity. I want to make sure I am working with what I want to work with.